My name is Nassim Sabs. Let me ask you a question. Has anything ever happened to you that you couldn't explain? That made you feel sort of foolish when you tried to tell somebody about it? Well, if it has, you have plenty of company, as you'll soon see. Hello YouTube, Validation Boy here. As some of you may know, I happen to work in the shopping center where former voice contestant Christina Grimmy was supposedly shot. I live very close to my place of employment and pass directly in front of this building, known as the Plaza Live, several times per day. On the afternoon of June 10th, things in the area seemed pretty normal. Several teenage kids and a few parents were already out front of the building buying tickets to what would become Christina's final performance. The venue where this alleged murder-suicide took place was open to the public in 1963 and has enjoyed three separate incarnations. It was once a movie theater, then it was a play hall, and now it's a music venue. A few years ago, my friends actually rented out the building for the day and put on a charity art and music festival. Since then, the place has been fully renovated. A large section was added onto the back of the building, and the tiered flooring was ripped out to accommodate for larger audiences. Now, this venue has a pretty crappy location, and it has always struggled to generate revenue. I've often wondered why the damn place hasn't just been demolished by now. Instead, it has been given a hugely expensive renovation. Hmm. Some people say it's haunted. Spooky legends persist from back in the 1990s when this place hosted weekly showings of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. The friends I used to hang with in high school were always saying they'd seen ghosts in that creepy old theater. When you really think about it, I bet that murky old place is totally housing some kind of hidden ritual chamber or something. After all, in Orlando, there are Freemason lodges everywhere. Casadega really isn't all too far away. And neither is NASA. And neither are these fucking creeps. By the looks of things, Miss Christina here has been doing a bit of dabbling in the dark arts. In this image, captured during her final show, something very strange seems to have been going on. This symbol is fucking scary. And oh, and by the way, too, I didn't mention they are three brothers. So you, here we have three members of the Brotherhood. I'm not saying they're members. They're Disney. They're Disney band too, you know. So first, let's get into this sigil really quick and sigil magic. Now, the reason this is sigil magic is because this symbol now represents them. They're using it as their logo, as did Prince. So that's that's automatically how you automatically c consider it sigil magic. Now. Um, the guy goes on to say about how they knew what it meant. They knew it meant phosphorus. Um, and phosphorus, if you don't know, is uh, Lucifer. It is Lucifer is the light bringer. Um, so it, the phosphorus is the, the real uh, alchemical word. And this is the symbol. And then they just enclosed it in a circle to finalize their sigil. Uh, another one you should notice too that also means phosphorus. Look at this one right here, the light bringer, Lucifer, the morning star. What's that remind you of? A church right there in their steeple. How many churches do you see that have almost that exact same look from the front? Um, the Invictus Games happened literally a month before in Orlando and connected to Disney. Okay, which of course, uh, Grimy and Before You Exit are, are connected to Disney. Um, and, I mean, even part of the mega ritual, like, all the money that's given to her, she's, she's like, her whole, I mean, her family's just giving, like, getting hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, uh, so here they are on, on Disney with Selena Gomez, so she's got connections to Disney. You had the Invictus Games, which had connections with Disney. Maybe shit like this is how she landed that long-term contract with NBC, you know?
And on top of all this, one of her best friends in the industry just so happens to be Selena Gomez, who, of course, got her big break starring in a Disney Channel children's sitcom about the life of a sociopathic teenage black magic sorceress. Very suspect, indeed. <laughs> Friday on the way to Cincinnati on a snow white Christmas Eve. I'm going home to see her mama and her daddy with the baby in the back seat. So Jesus, take the Keep, though I keep 
It's all through there, our, the blessed hope. Number two, she's way better off now. Way better off. She's more alive now she's ever been. And, um, you know, she, she really isn't dead. She's alive, and she's more alive now than she was here. And she's, um, like Mr. Grimmy said the other night to us, she's fully alive. She's, she's better now than she ever was before. the giant guy to say, man. Listen, one of my gripes about country singers is line by line, we start with this deep right. sound, you know what I mean? And yeah. they fall off pitch by the end of the line. Every exit, you fell off with as much strength as you started with. That was real important I to me. I appreciate that. By the way, guys, that's a, that's a Keith Whitley song. That's true country music. It's not going to be heard anymore. And thirdly is, and this is where I'm wrestling, God's plan is better than my plan. I know that for a fact. I can't hardly plan a dinner thing, right? No, you can't. No, I can't. Start your journey into country music with that guy down there. <laughs> do you want to be a novelty, Jake? Or do you want to be a real rootsy country singer? I want to be a rootsy country yeah, singer. Yeah, you do. She placed third on season six of The Voice, and she continued to work with Adam and the show. But last year, she was tragically killed outside of her concert. Yep, that's a shock, all right. Okay, well, last night, The Voice announced the Christina Grimmie Foundation. Family joins us live this morning. Her mom, Tina, her dad, Bud, and her brother, Marcus. Thank you all for joining us Thank today. Thank you for having us. Lives in the unseen zones, not seen in between those without flesh or bone. Roam in the void, they avoid all detection. Interdimensional beings all connected. Angels and demons from spiritual realms engaged in a battle from heaven to hell. They dwell all around us and even inside some of those that invite what they call spirit guides. Enticed by Ouija boards, they seek guidance and think there's a secret to be enlightened. Little do they know what they just invited. A demonic presence has just resided in the Days of Noah, all kinds of hybrids and portrayed the earth, but most were silenced, wiped out by the flood. All these tyrants, bloodlines polluted by these ancient giants. The men of renown, heroes of old, have now returned. Let the truth be told. They wear new disguises, Thoth and Isis are now aliens come to invite us and guide us. The fruit is ripened, it's so inviting. Evolved to a god enlightened, and don't be frightened. But I must ask why there I did seem aligned with Lucifer's life. This song serves as a warning to anyone searching Demonic minions are lurking and virtually everywhere Posing as anything, stalking their prey with original sin This song serves as a warning to anyone searching Demonic minions are lurking and virtually everywhere Posing as anything, stalking their prey with original sin Is it coincidence that all these incidents represent all the same thing that's